Today, I would like to talk about dana, sila, and bhavana. One day, the Buddha said in Abhidhamma Pitaka, Tatta katamang, Tatta katamo, Punyabi sankaro. Tatta katamo, Punyabi sankaro. They are in what is heightened formation of wholesomeness. Kusala Chetana Kama Vachara Rupa Vachara Dana Maya Sila Maya Bhavana Maya Volition of wholesomeness of sense fear and form sphere. Dana Maya Sila Maya Bhavana Maya connected with giving, connected with virtue, connected with meditation. Dana Maya connected with giving. Silamaya connected with virtue. Bhavanamaya connected with meditation. Now we will go to the words dana, sila, bhavana. Dana, what is the meaning of dana? Giving. Sila, virtue. Bhavana, meditation. Okay. Dana is giving, sila for virtue, bhavana for meditation. Is there any order of these words? Usually? First one is dana. Second one, sila. Third one, bhavana. Usually when we learn and when we study, we think there is an order. Dana is first. Sila is second and Bhavana is third. So when we are going to practice, we think first we have to do what? Dana. Secondly, you have to do Sila. And finally, Bhavana. Is it correct? When we are learning, when we are studying, this is the order. Dana, Sila and Bhavana. But when we are going to practice, it may be different. However, I will tell you. But first thing, when we call dana, dana means not only giving. Giving is something we can understand easily, the meaning of dana. But dana is not only giving. Sila is virtue, but sila, there is so many meanings included into this virtue. And bhavana is also not only meditation. But these are the common translated words. However, we can go to the practical things and then we can understand what is the real meaning of dana and sila and bhavana. But in the beginning, I would like to say, here we call another word kusala. What is the meaning of kusala? Wholesome. I don't know why they translated the word kusala into wholesome. However, in Pali language, we use the word kusala for skill. If someone has a skill in something, we can say he is kusala. As an example, if someone has a very good skill in singing, we can say, he is kusala in singing. If someone is skillful in cooking, he <laughs> is kusala in cooking. So kusala is skillfulness. What can we explain by skill? As an example, if after doing something, you may get a result, bad result, then can we say the thing what you do is skillful thing? No, it is not a skillful thing. It is unskillful. So the skillfulness is depends what you are doing and what is the result of that. If something after doing it gives you good result, then you can say this one is skillful thing. 
and the other one, if something after doing that, if you have some bad result, then you have to say that is unskillful thing. Then the kusala is something can be given you a good result. So the meaning of kusala, something gives you good result. And the opposite of kusala, akusala. Very easy. Kusala, akusala. So kusala, skillfulness, and akusala, unskillfulness. And after doing something, if, if it gives you bad result, then you can say this one is akusala, not kusala. Good result, what are the good result? Commonly we can say happiness. If after doing something you can get the happiness, but the happiness should be pure, because if you do something, it gives you happiness for you, but it gives a bad result for the others, then you cannot be happy entirely. So the happiness should be pure. So the pure happiness, if you can get something after doing something, then you can say this one is a skillful thing and also it is kusala. Then the kusala gives you good result. Good result means happiness. The opposite. A kusala gives you bad result. What are the bad results? Unhappiness, so suffering. Okay? Now the kusala, you know what is kusala and what is the result of kusala. The result of kusala, vipaka. Kusala gives you kusala vipaka. Kusala, skillfulness, wholesome, gives you kusala vipaka, happiness. A kusala, unwholesome, unskillfulness, gives you akusala vipaka, suffering. Do you like to have akusala vipaka? No. But if you do something akusala, you should have akusala vipaka. If you don't like akusala vipaka, you have to avoid akusala. Because akusala is the root Akusala is the cause. Akusala vipaka, suffering is defect. If you don't like to get the effect, you have to avoid the cause. So, you know the Buddha's teaching is cause and effect, about cause and effect. So, here we can see the kusala is something we should practice, develop. Akusala should not practice and should not develop. But usually, which kind of result we are having mostly? Kusala vipaka or akusala vipaka? Oh, akusala vipaka. Oh. Then it means you are mostly doing akusala. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise you cannot get the Akusala Vipaka. Because Vipaka is something effect, not cause. So effects, how the effects comes without cause. So the causes are if you if with you then we cannot avoid the Vipaka's results. So here now you can see the Kusala Vipaka and Akusala Vipaka. Then you like Kusala Vipaka happiness and you don't like Akusala Vipaka, then you have to practice and develop Kusala and you have to avoid Akusala. So here the Buddha said, there in what is wholesomeness, the heightened formation of wholesomeness, Punyabi Sankhara, there are, here the Buddha mentioned two Fears also, sense fear and false fear. But here I would like to explain only the sense fear. In sense fear, we have three kind of wholesomeness. First one is dana, sila, and bhavana. Meditation, you know, there are two kind of meditation. What are those? 
Samatha and Vipassana. Samatha, what is the meaning of Samatha? Yeah, meditation of concentration. As an example, the meaning of Samatha. If two people are fighting, then one person go there and make them calm, make them peace, or don't fight, now it's okay, settle that. We can say that is Samatha. Samatha is settling, making peaceful something, but temporary, <laughs> not permanent. Because after going that person, they may again fight. So, the mind is always struggling, always fighting, so many defilements. Then the concentration is something we can use to make it peace and calm and tranquil, to tranquil the mind and also the body. For this meditation we can say that concentration, meditation, the mind become more calm and peace. That is the result of Samatha. What is the Vipassana? We call insight meditation, Vipassana. Seeing something penetratively, through something. So, these are the two kind of meditation, practice, Samatha and Vipassana. Now I am explaining to you about Dana, Sila and Bhavana. Now I started from Bhavana. So the Bhavana, there are two kinds of Bhavana, Samatha Bhavana and Vipassana Bhavana, Tranquility Meditation or Concentration and Insight Meditation. Samatha Bhavana, Vipassana Bhavana. And Sila, now we go to the Sila. Sila, what is Sila? Virtue? Yeah. How do you practice Sila? Observing and protecting five precepts. Now you know the Bhavana and Sila. And then, what is the next? Dana. How do you practice dana? Yeah, offering food, giving help, helping others. This is the main meanings what we have got about these three words, dana, sila and bhavana. Now think, when you are going to practice dana, sila, bhavana, it is something special or normal. As you say now, when you are practicing bhavana, you can meditate, like uh, tranquility or insight. How do you meditate? Yeah, you will sit down and cross your legs and... Okay, you know how to meditate, <laughs> I don't need to explain about that. So meditation is something you have to do. Virtue is also something you have to practice. Dana giving is also something you have to practice. I ask the question, are those things normal things or something special? You said that when you are practicing meditation, you should have to go somewhere and sit down and cross the leg and pay your attention to your body or something like that. It's something you are doing especially, isn't it? Yeah, when you are going to protect Sila, you should have some intention, especially, not a normal thing. But when you are going to offer something, is it normal? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, anyway, now can you say, the Dana, Sila and Bhavana are Something you have to do, activities, are those things activities? Activities mean something you have to do. That is the thing what, you should know, what I have to explain. Dana, Sila, Bhavana is something you have to do. This is the understand what you have got now. Is it correct or wrong? Are you agree with me? <laughs> Not totally. <laughs> okay. 
Now I will explain about Dana Sila Bhavana. When you are going to practice Dana Sila Bhavana, I said to you that it is different how we are studying. I will explain in one situation, in one incident, how the Dana Sila Bhavana is working. Because Dana Sila Bhavana, usually we think these are activities which we should practice or we should do. But actually Dana Sila Bhavana are not some activities we have to do, but we should develop these qualities. Dana Sila Bhavana are not activities, but these are qualities, some good qualities. These are the good qualities which we have to practice, we have to develop, not as an activities. So I will explain, then you can understand what I'm going to say. Imagine, now you are going in your car to the town. In your car you are driving, nobody inside, there are enough space. And when you are going, you can see a person is near to the road, he's waiting for a bus or waiting for a vehicle to go to the same direction. I don't know whether that is the culture of here <laughs> nowadays because of the COVID or something. However, usually in Asian countries, if we say so something, we like to help them and we, we can invite them to come with us. Then, when you are going, you can see a person near to the road waiting for a vehicle to go to the same direction where you are going. And your vehicle, there is a space in your vehicle also. So then, now you can do something. What you can do? You can give a? Yeah, give a lift for him. Oh, otherwise you can mind only your own business. So you can go ahead without helping. But think, if you think or if you decide to help him or her, then you can stop your vehicle and ask him to get in. Then you can give a lift for him to the relevant place and after doing that your activity is over. But in this activity you can see these four things. Which are the four things? Dana, Sela, Samatha, Vipassana. In this small activity you can find out these four kind of good qualities, not activities, but good qualities. Samadha, Vipassana, Sila and Dana. How? Samadha, Vipassana, Sila and Dana. I will explain to you how it is happening. When you are driving your car, if your mind is not calm, if your mind is struggling or wandering with some other things, can you see the person is waiting there? No, you cannot see. It means that time you are driving, your mind was calm. Otherwise you cannot see the person. It means you already had samatha. The first thing you had a good mind, peaceful mind at that moment. So that is the samatha, the quality of samatha, tranquility of your mind and the peaceful, calm, calmness of your mind. And then, after seeing the person, you have to analyze now what is going on. Now there is a person and I think he may is waiting for the same, to go to the same direction, to the town or somewhere. And also there is a space in my vehicle. And if I give a lift for him, it would be 
better. So now you have to analyze what is going on, what would be his needs. Now you are thinking about his needs, his or her needs. And also you can consider about that, if I am staying there, if another one comes to come and cross this road, and what would be my needs? If someone gives me a lift, it would be a happiness, a bit better. So, when you empathy, pay your empathy about that person, and you can consider, now what should I do? But still you did not make the decision. Still you are analyzing. What can I do? What should I do? Then you have an idea, now this is an opportunity to give a help, a lift for someone. It may be a wholesome activity. Now you can make the decision by analyzing. Because you should analyze. Why? When you are seeing the person, he is not wearing something to the body. So it means he is not someone waiting for a vehicle. Because he may sometimes come to the road to see something. Because we have to analyze actually what is the need of the person. So sometimes he may be playing in the road, we no need to give a lift for him. So we have to consider about those things, analyze those things. Then we can make the decision properly. The decision, yes, I should help him. I should give a lift for him. So, when you make that decision, can you make the decision without insight? No, you cannot make the decision without insight. You need wisdom, make the decision. Otherwise, you cannot make the decision. So first you should have the calm and peaceful mind, and then you need wisdom to make the decision. You can make the decision without wisdom, but it should not be the proper, correct and main decision. But if you need to get a proper decision, you should use wisdom. When you are using wisdom and analyzing those things, then you are practicing vipassana. Now first you practice samatha and then you are practicing vipassana also. Then you already complete bhavana. Okay? Now you have bhavana. Otherwise, you cannot make the decision. Then the second part is coming now. When you make the decision to give a lift for him, the mind become so calm and quiet and mind help you, but the defilements come, making obstacles. Oh, don't do so. You no need to worry about him. We can go. We should not help those things. Who knows he has COVID? <laughs> So many things comes to your mind to push or pull. To push to the wholesome or to the pull from the wholesome. To pull from the wholesome, not to the push. Because defilements don't like to wholesome. Defilements always say, don't do. Now you can see, I think you have so many experience about those things. When you are going to do good thing, when you decide to meditate, then your mind and defilements come. Oh, no, 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 not now. I can do later. Now it's time to eat something. <laughs> so you know how the defilements are working. So then, when you decide to do a wholesome thing, then the defilements come and pull back you from the wholesome activity. These are obstacles. If you have good sealer, sealer mean virtue. Yeah, virtue mean you have an intention to help others, to do something for others with metta, loving kindness. If someone has the quality of sealer, virtue, surely he has metta. 
Metta is the power that we can use to avoid those obstacles. Metta is the only power you can use to overcome from all the obstacles. So you can use virtue here to practice, to go forward through your decision. To take your decision, to make your decision, you use wisdom, vipassana, and to continue your decision to activity, you need sealer. Otherwise you cannot do. Otherwise you cannot help. Then you are helping him or her. How? Now, if you get onto your vehicle and you drive and give him or her a lift. So that is something you are sacrificing. That is dana. That is the giving. Now you are giving something. You are also giving a lift. Okay, then after doing that, what do you feel? You feel unhappy or happy. You feel happy. Then the wholesome activity gives you happiness. Here you can see, in the beginning you had samatha, the peaceful mind. And then you had vipassana. You analyze which kind of help I should do now. Then you had meditation, bhavana, not activity, but the quality of meditation. And then the obstacles comes from your inside. No, no, don't do. But you use your metta for overcome all the obstacles by virtue. Now you are practicing virtue, the quality of virtue, not only protecting five precepts, but you are practicing the quality of virtue with metta, loving kindness. And then you offer something, you give something, you sacrifice something, dedicate something, your time and your help. So here you are practicing dana. And the bhavana, sila, dana, after doing this, you can get the happiness. When your mind is happy, Again your mind become peaceful. Then your mind again become samatha. Now, when you are in samatha, you can observe another person you can help. So now it becomes a circle. Now you can see, when you are in peace and calm, then if you have enough wisdom, you can make good decision to help others and then you should have the metta to overcome from your inside obstacles and then you can do so many good deeds. And after that you can get happiness again and again. Always happiness increasing and the peace increasing, wisdom increasing, metta increasing dana increasing. Then the happiness again increasing. This is the circle. This should be practiced, developed as good quality which you have to practice. Not only as an activity. That is why I say to you, dana sila bhavana is not something we have to do, but we have to develop as good qualities. So the bhavana is connected with our life, not something separate from life. But you know, to develop your concentration, you should go to the forest. <laughs> that is about your develop of your concentration and wisdom. But day-to-day -day life, you can practice this bhavana, this quality. Then you can develop your virtue by overcoming all the obstacles. Because when you are decided to do any kind of wholesome thing, surely so many defilements come and make so many barriers. 
So then you have to consider about your metta. Then you can overcome all the obstacles by using metta. As an example, you decide to meditate. Then the obstacles come. Oh no, 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 this is not the time to meditate. This is, today is very rainy day, so today is not a good day to meditate. So you have to use metta. How do you can use metta for overcome this? <laughs> difficult to practice. Yeah. Actually it is difficult. That is why I said the virtue is not only protecting precepts. Protecting precepts is something you can do but virtue is not only that. Virtue is very practical thing to overcome all the defilements. So, when you feel lazy and you can be metta for yourself. If I do meditation now, I can help myself. If I postpone my meditation session to the evening or night, who knows I will die. So then, today is a rainy day. Then, today is a very cold day. So, it's very good for my body. <laughs> okay. So then, I have a metta for myself. Then, this is the time to meditate. This is the proper time to meditate. Not to postpone my meditation session. So then you can practice with metta. So, so many times you can practically use this metta to overcome from the obstacles. And but you should have a good peaceful mind always. If you have a good peaceful mind, calm mind always, it means you are happy. Otherwise you cannot maintain your calmness. You should have happiness. Happiness you can get by helping others and helping yourself by doing good deeds. So, Dana Shila Bhavana is something we can practice. We can develop very good rare qualities. If you have enough Dana Shila Bhavana, then your mind always happy. Because your mind always in wholesome kosala. If you are in kosala, kosala gives you kosala vipaka, results of the wholesome. What are the results of wholesomeness? Happiness. You like happiness? Yeah, be happy by doing wholesome. So wholesomeness is something you have to develop as normally. Yeah. Your answer is correct. <laughs> you said that the Dana Sela Bhavana is not something special. It's normal thing. But <laughs> I told you, no, it is special. <laughs> Actually, when people go into practice Dana Sila Bhavana, they think Dana Sila Bhavana is something we have to do specially. You do Dana every morning. Is it correct? You do Dana activity every morning, but you can practice the quality of Dana every time, not only in the morning. Otherwise, you practice Dana. Only morning, <laughs> because monks do not eat for night, <laughs> no dinner, <laughs> so you cannot practice dana night time. <laughs> so dana is something very good quality. You can do so many things like giving. You can smile with someone. You can talk two or three words with someone. You can say good morning to someone. And you can do so many things, not only offering food. If someone needs to come here, you can give the space. It's also dana. Dana is doing something until the end with the effort. Sila is something you can use for overcome all the obstacles which are becoming barriers for your wholesome thoughts. 
So when you are practicing sila, you need metta. Now you can practice bhavana, sila and dana. And dana gives you happiness and your mind become again calm. Then you have bhavana, then you can do again sila, dana. Now when you are going to study, we can study dana, sila, bhavana. But when you are going to practice, you have to practice bhavana, sila and dana. Okay, I think enough for today.